अभी नहीं वेल हेलो एवरी वन हेलो नेहा हे जयंतिका पपिया एंड यस सो वी आर बैक विद अ सीरीज ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट कैप्स्यूल फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ टर्म टू आई मीन स्मॉल डोजेस टू अटैक टर्म टू मे बी आई वुड से हेलो नाइन गुड इवनिंग हे गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग और राइट सो I mean, it's been one class. We are one class down for this, right? So, in the last class, I hope you remember what we discussed, right? Hi, Adira. Hi, Swahani. Pranavi. Yes, yes. Thank you, Hema. Thank you. Yes, I I forgot to ask you that actually this time. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I am perfectly audible and perfectly visible. So let's start with. Come on. Gravitation is universal. this is something which we have already learned right i mean in the last class we learned this the universal law of gravitation right fine so we st we started with the legend of newton i mean he saw an apple falling down he started thinking then we reached this is the force which is also making what the moon revolve around the earth in a perfect orbit right this is something i bishal same same with me also Arjun, you know the deal. See, in my session, ask good questions. Your name will surely be called out. Come on. Hi, Zahida. All right. Oh, you are seeing this only right now. I didn't join. It's fine. So, uh, I would say if you missed last session, it was pretty basic. I mean, we just talked about universal law of gravitation, and don't worry, we are covering that now. It's a very quick summary. So, focus now. Come on. So, gravitation is universal. We know this, right? Now. gravitation stretches to infinity i mean universe what do we say to universe my god you are infinite that's why we are saying gravitation is stretching to infinity all right i mean there is sun there is solar system there is universe there is a milky way galaxy and you know there is this whole universe all right yes yes very good ema every object attracts the other object if a object has mass means yes it is going to fall under universal law of gravitation good evening good evening pikon yes so for those who missed last session very quick formula recap come on universal law of gravitation f equals g m m by r square you know what this g is what universal gravitational constant fine m is mass of one object second m is mass of another object and whenever you say capital m we normally say it is the mass of the earth i mean it's okay same thing right and this is mass of object radius from the center all right fine the value of g is and the unit of g very important fine hey priyanshu welcome welcome to the class very good vishal yes universe is expanding yes yes what is g universal gravitational constant and mind it universal it doesn't change fine The value of g is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. Very good. Now acceleration due to gravity. When I'm saying acceleration due to gravity, we also reached a point where we understood g equals g m by r square. Right? M is the mass of Earth. G was again the constant, and this was r. Fine. Hi Hardik. Good evening. Thank you, Sai. Small m is the mass of object. All right, Neha. I think before just Bishal only answered this, na. So yeah, Neha, your answer is uh, written by Bishal over there. Yes. Oh, these are very deep questions. Why is universe expanding? I mean, Hubble telescope uh, uh, observed this. Yes. So all right, come on. Our focus will be today on acceleration due to gravity. The small part, right? G equals g m by r square. So that is what we'll focus more today. Fine. So acceleration gained by an object due to force of gravity. We know this. I mean, on Earth, what do we say? We say f equals g m m by r square. Right? This is from Earth's gravitational force. And do you remember the Newton's second law? I mean, originally, originally you would remember it as F equals m a, and and before that you knew something else also before going to f equals m a, and I I I hope someone will tell me. Yes, that is the radius. Nice, Jayantika. Thank you. 
What is R? Zahida, R is the radius, all right? Radius of the earth over here. No, Anshul, you're not late. I mean, you are, I would say, just on time. We have just begun, all right? So, before F equals MA, I hope you remember, it was rate of change of momentum. Change in momentum was equal to net external force, right? And when you solved everything, you got F equals MA. What is acceleration? Here, if a body is falling, we are saying this A is what G? G is what? It's, it's acceleration, right? So, from Newton's second law, we also said F equals mg, all right? So, this is also F. This is also the same F, which means G M M by R square equals mg. And I can say that G equals G M by R square, which you already know. I understand. Can R be taken as distance? Yes, you can, from the center of the earth. Oh, you feel difficulty in numericals, huh? Don't worry, Hardik. So, stay with me, stay with us, and we'll practice. We'll practice good questions. Numericals are nothing. It's just, you have to practice more numericals, right? Every numerical is trying to confuse you some way, and you, you, with more practice, will understand in what ways the question can confuse you. That's it. Thank you, Neha. Yes, Vishal, very good. Nice. Oh, this is a very nice and very elaborated statement. Nice. Sure, uh, I would call you Raman. It's a, it's a long name, sorry. All right. So, the average value comes out to be G equals 9.8 meter per second square. Now, mind it, I'm saying average. Average, right? Which means it's not like it's everywhere 9.8. On an average, it is 9.8 meter per second square. Fine. All right. Doubt session. I would say you are the boss over here. You demand. And we can, right? Yes, approx and average would be a better word. Fine. All right. Yes, Bishal, Bishal, you are right over there. Nice. So, yes, along the surface, uh, the reason I'm saying it's average is because Earth is not a perfect sphere. If it was a perfect sphere, then I would have said radius, radius from the center to the pole or to the equator would have been the same. But it is not because Earth is not a sphere. I mean, we call it an oblate, uh, the term was oblate spheroid, I would say, right? So that is why. So the thing is, poles and equator, the radius of equator is greater than radius at pole. So I would say the distance of pole from the center of the earth is less compared to distance of equator from the center of the earth. Yes? No, Poppy, you, you, I think you were there, no? From the start. How this value changes, Arnab, uh, we are discussing over here. Yes. So, first thing on which factors does G depends? First of all, think of the radius, the distance from the center of the Earth. Yes, Earth is flatter at poles. It is in perfect spherical, oblate, spheroid, right? So, we say, when you understand this, in this formula, if R decreases, means G will increase, because it is inverse proportional, right? So if R decreases, so we are saying at poles, the radius is less, means G will be more. At equator, G radius is more, means G will be less, fine. So that's why we are saying, equator pay G kam hota hai from poles, right? Value of G at equator is less than at poles, right? Yes, Edwin, very good. So mv square r, I would say you are a little ahead of uh, the syllabus right now. I mean, centripetal force, you'll deal with it. Don't worry, don't worry. In your classes to come, you'll have a lot more things to learn. Yes, of course, value will change on other planets, the scene, you're right. So either I, I, I hope you answer, answered your question. This is mv square upon r. This is what? This is the centripetal force. Right now, it's not necessary for you, I would say. All right. Cool. So. What did you understand? You were asking me the factors on which G depends. I would say with height. And you were saying, so can R be called as distance? It can, yes, right? So it means if you reach at heights, right? If you go above the Earth's surface, what will happen? The radius will increase. The distance from the center will increase. Means the value of G would decrease, right? I would say A is, A is, a bigger orbit than B. Radius of A is more, which means G at A will be less than G at B. This is A, this is one orbit, this is B, this is another orbit, right? Thank you, Priyanshu. Gaurav, the deal is clear. 
ask questions answer answer and then you know what your name will be there don't worry all right yes distance from center of earth you are right over there vishal find what is b over here b is this path you see this white dotted thing right this is b orbit and this purple dashed circle is a orbit fine so you understood as you go to more and more height the value of g decreases why does it decrease because the radius or the center from the or the distance from the center of the earth is increasing that's why fine because and you know the formula all right so come on class 10th yes class 10th we are going i mean we are doing it currently don't you worry and follow the channel everything is there all the notifications all the schedule uh, things it's there come on i think time for a question come on guys let's do it an astronaut dives out of his spaceship to explore an exoplanet all right whose mass is three times and the radius is half of the earth so all right shalini uh, let me just uh, read this question and let people solve it i'll explain you calculate the astronaut's acceleration as he falls towards the surface of the exoplanet so what do you need you want to find the value of g at that exoplanet right in terms of the g at earth fine come on do this and shivani i'm answering uh, so what we were saying we were saying g equals g m by r square right so this r this r is what distance from the center of the earth if you go away from the center means in another orbit higher than the surface of the earth what is happening this distance is increasing if r is increasing means g will decrease right so that's why we are saying if you go higher and higher the value of g the acceleration due to gravity decreases fine oh nice sheeta all right i think we are getting answers so bobby your question is again it's a little deep you are talking about space time and some other day some other know your teacher session will deal with this all right uh option d we are getting okay let's see so how did you start first of all tell me you must have started with the formula right the formula was at earth g equals g m by r square that's fine let's say this is r radius of earth and this is mass of earth all right let's say at this new planet g dash will be g his, the the planet's mass is what it is 3 times of the earth 3 me fine radius is half all right so r e by 2 whole square and i'm i'm hoping that uh, some of you are able to find the mistake surya pradap answer the question your name will be there so this is coming out to be g m e upon r e square divided by 4 it will go up this will be 12 g m e upon r e square and this is what this is g so answer is 12 g 18 kon bola tha it's okay see if you are making mistake i'm glad you have made a mistake over here you will not repeat it then fine so answer is b right speed is good but speed with accuracy is something that matters fine all right so option b is the right answer come on let's talk free fall and free fall something which i am not sure we have experienced and i hope we don't but but safe free fall is something we might experience all right so amna you are saying can i do it again all right all right very quick first of all see what is g g is what g m by r square fine you understand this formula mass is mass of earth radius is radius of earth now the question is saying the mass of that planet is three times of earth we have written this the radius is half of earth you will put half and do the square of it na hai na r ka square hai so that's why you will do r square it will come out to be like this you will solve it and simple mathematics will be answer 12g fine all right thank you sanya apple dropped is the free fall here right Oh, Hardik, sorry, I missed your previous chat. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You can ask the question again. Don't worry, I'm looking. All right. So, if an object is moving under the influence of the force of gravity alone, then it is said to be under free fall. The important keyword here is, oh, you have experienced free fall. Yes, it's very scared. I'm, I'm, I know. 
बंजी जंपिंग आई वुड से इज काइंड ऑफ अ फ्री फॉल फॉर अ मोमेंट येस इट इज गोइंग टू बी देयर कृष्णा डोंट वरी येस नोन सो दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंट की वर्ड ग्रेविटी एंड ग्रेविटी अलोन सो वेन यू आर थिंकिंग I would say if you can neglect about air drag, if it is very significant, you will have to take it to account that it is not free fall. Fine. So don't worry. We'll discuss. The observation is, you might have seen why we tend to be tend to be, you know, uh, I would say inclined towards thinking how is it free fall because we live here on Earth. There is what atmosphere around us. So when you drop a paper and a coin, you have a very good observation of. coin would fall faster than the paper paper will just go like this uh, right like a like a leaf in the wind right yes an object dropping from certain height you are right yes scary now what happens when you drop something in vacuum paper and the coin both will touch the ground at the same time now uh yes bishal you are right any two objects with this of the same height at the same height will drop at the same time that's fine now if you want to uh, i would say observe this you know evidently i would say once you get time you know on youtube search for search for as not david scott's experiment apollo 15 mission he did this experiment dropping a hammer and a feather on the moon and that was a very good experiment so you know just have a look yes due to friction of air you're right Arnab, you are right. Nothing practically, nothing on earth goes through free fall. Yes. Very good, very good. Nice, nice crowd over here. Nice. All right. So now that we have learned free fall, let's talk about weightlessness. What is weightlessness? Think, think. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. nice 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 conceptual debate i can see in the in the in the comments right now yes you are right all right so come on weightlessness first of all free fall was when when it was only under the effect of gravity fine that is one thing an object which is under this condition of free fall will experience weightlessness absence or sensation of weight right yes due to more inertia i mean there there are good videos on the on the internet right yes sense of being weightless you're right yes so this footage i mean i hope you can expect where this footage is from iss right international space station they keep on giving these footages right now so uh, akshay your statement na i would say it's a little incorrect when you said when you said when an object is only under the force of gravity it is it is free fall so i would say zero gravity you can't say you would say only gravity i mean if you are thinking the satellite which is going around the earth does it has no gravity it is it is the case of free fall right All right yes when a lift is falling we are in we are in the condition of weightless yes yes it is free fall yes vishal so come on come on come on come back come back come back hello aditya which ball will reach the ground first if both of them are dropped from the same height at the same time neglect air resistance that is given to you right So, what do you think? And I, I hope uh, all of you know the answer of this. Yes. Ye what? Shalini, ah, uh, I think there might be some net issue. All right, so just refresh it once. Yes, I think Vishal, Sanya, Nipun, Pranavi. All right. Hema, why B? I think you missed one thing. Neglect air resistance. So it's it means what? It's a vacuum, right? 
Yes, very good. Both will reach at the same time. Because there is no air drag, there is no air resistance. And that's what happens, right? It doesn't matter what is the mass of the body. What matters is if they have both been dropped from the same height. That is something which is important, fine? All right. Yes? So, identify the free fall situation from the following. Now, I have put this question very deliberately. I mean, uh, I understand we should mention that there is no air resistance. But still, can we consider a case which is almost almost a free fall think thank you Taseen nice yes Ashish you're right Arnab very good all right so tell me come on so first option is what an apple is falling from a tree all right second is it's a rocket during a launch fine C is a boy dropping a ball from his hand fine D is what a parachuter Why are you? Oh, uh, I would say a thought of habit, okay, yeah, I would say. But you know what? Because the reason is, whatever we are learning, it's all in English, right? Slowly, slowly. By, I'm also from UP. You know me now, right? But what am I doing here? We all have to learn in this manner. So what, what, what do you have to do? Improve on this, right? Slowly, slowly, we have to improve on this. So it's okay. Content miss nahi hoga. You won't miss any content. You won't miss any concept. Language be improve ho jayega. See, I would say my language improved using uh, viewing most of the English series or English movies. So maybe with my help, you might improve it. So fine. All right. So that's why. Or chill, yaar. Kuch miss nahi hoga. Yes. Identify the free fall. Come on. And I'm not saying only one option needs to be correct. Think. Oh yes, Sanya, you're right over there. Yes, everything faces air resistance. You're right, you're right. Yes. Yes. So, see, I'm telling you the reason. I told you, yes, air resistance is going to be there. But still, which cases we can neglect it in this? So, most probably, in any question, in any exam, if you get such a question, what you will get is, A, what is happening? A, an apple is dropped from a tree. Tree is not at very much height. Na. When it is very close to ground, you can think that yeah, air drag will be minimal. Similarly with this boy case, but here the rocket is going up means this is not possible. I mean, this is not even, you don't have to think of it. But here, the parachute works on air drag. That's why. So A and C would be the most possible answer. Fine. Right? Come on, Newton's equation of motion. And now we are combining what? The gravitational acceleration, right? The gravitational force, gravitational acceleration with Newton's equation of motions, right? <laughs> yes, that's, that's not an all of all. All right, come on. You know the three equations, V equals U plus AT, S equals UT plus half AD square and V square equals U square plus 2AS. Now, can someone tell me why not B? Free fall. Only force should be gravity. But what is happening? The rocket is expelling that hot air, which is giving it one more push upwards. So more than more than one force is acting, right? Uh, Rajiv, yes, kind of, yes. If you want to trip more on weightlessness, I would say yes, you can talk about in these terms. Ashish, <laughs> did Apple really fall in Newton's head? I would say again, it's a legend. I'm not very sure. It says that he saw an apple falling. It fell on his head. So, you know, we have multiple interpretations. That's how it happens. Right, come on. Can someone tell me, when you look at these three equations of motion, what is the, what is the most important criteria you should know regarding acceleration? Yes, Amrita, you're right. We need to replace A by G. But my question is, what is the requirement, first of all, to even apply these three equations? Yes or no, it was not B. The answer was, it could be A and C, right? Yes, hi, hi, Musin. Yes, Akshay, you are right, you are right. Anyone, anyone, guys. Ah, nice, nice, Rajiv. Uniform acceleration. Yes, you can only apply these equations of motion when there is a uniform acceleration. In non-uniform acceleration, you can't even apply them. Yes. 
to be influence of gravity so in a way in a way this is what this is uniform acceleration if it is in the gravity it is what uniform acceleration that's why whether it is falling down going up doesn't matter all right so now in solving these questions i'll give you two approaches one is the approach which is easier to understand it is there in the book but the second approach will be easier to understand i mean a little difficult to understand i would say but it will help you a lot in the further classes so all right so first of all come on come, on, come back equation of motion for free falling bodies you were saying going up coming down let's explore it let's say a ball is thrown upwards right so what do you say let's say it reached a height s fine as you can say is the distance g now as per the book the book is saying take g as negative when it is going up and you can understand it i would you would you would think ball is going up the acceleration is trying to stop the ball so i would say it is negative okay i don't mind fine g is you have to take negative when it's going up and finally the ball will stop v will become zero fine yes all right yes emma displacement don't worry i'm coming back i'm telling you first of all what is given in the book right then what happens the ball ball it has to come down i mean yes so it will come down again traveling the same distance fine the book says take g as positive plus 9.8 meter per second square fine oh sorry sorry bumi <laughs> arnab it actually does so i am saying na ki whenever things which are closer to the surface of the earth and and you can think that air drag is minimal right so that's why you can apply these yes so in gravity direction we say it is positive if it is going upwards you can take it as negative put it in the questions and you will get the answer i mean there won't be much problem so there is not much that this thing will falter except one thing right so i'll solve this question in both the methods watch carefully right yes yes hema it is against gravity then negative you are right so first of all using this methodology right the positive while coming down negative while going up let's solve this question right then we would be floating floating in the space up here <laughs> right come on come on guys question a ball is dropped from top of a building of height of 44.24 meters all right what is given to you the height of building is given to you it took 3 seconds to reach the ground all right it took 3 seconds to reach the ground calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity here what is asked the value of g is asked right okay all right good evening fun with colors yes we are on the surface of the earth near to pole or equator this building is located so you are expected to find the value of g and based on that value you are supposed to tell is it on equator or is it on pole i think you got the idea first of all you have to find the value of g and you know what it's it's simple you can find it using the equation of motion right the ball is at a height of 44.24 4 meters that's true this is the height all right now let's start come on what is given to you s is given to you right it is 44.24 fine what is given to you time is given to you as how much 3 seconds given to you right yes height and time are given hema you are right so come on what do you have to find you have to find g yes there is something else given to you but not told explicitly yes yes Yes, yes, nice. Boomi, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a, a good answer actually. Yes, Vishal, U is also given to you. Why? Because it is dropped. And when you say something is dropped, it means U equals zero, right? Initial velocity is also given to you indirectly. Yes, you're right. So come on, which equation do you want to use? I would say, looking at these variables, what is given to us, I think second equation will be the better, right? i mean i would say h equals ut plus half gt square fine all right h is 44.24 equals u is 0 means this is 0 plus i think you are solving right come on come on half into g is you have to find t is uh, 3 3 square is 9 so come on come on do it 
so when you solve it you will get 44.24 multiplied by 2 and I understand there is a little bit of calculation 9 equals equals sorry sorry my bad equals G right yes second equation and when you solve it you will get 9.83 meter per second square so I would say the most critical thing is to reach this value of 9.83 when you reach this value the thing is you know average is 9.8 you also know on the equator value of g is less on poles the value of g is more and if you are saying average is 9.8 means on poles it is going to be more than 9.8 on equator is going it is going to be less than 9.8 ashish wait a second so but the value you got is it is more than 9.8 right it is greater than 9.8 kya matlab iska matlab it is yes yeah Emma, approx value is fine it means it is going to be it is going to be at the poles right because the value is more than 9.8 on the equator let me just tell you the value would come around 9.7 yes the temperate zone nice so that's why i mean we don't talk about arctic circle and arctic circle and all these things but still we say that yes on poles it is more than 9.8 on on equator it is less than 9.8 on an average it is 9.8 fine yes mass and weight shalini uh i think you are confused so i'll just explain you i think you have understood everything the only thing you are you are confused with 9.83 now on an average we say it is 9.8 right but you also know that earth is not a sphere it is a, a oblate spheroid which means pole radius is less equator radius is more at pole g is more than 9.8 at equator g is less than 9.8 means I can say if I'm getting a value as 9.83 it is going to be at the pole fine that's it all right Shalini I hope you are clear I mean I'm clear now all right so come on mass and weight mass is what it is the quantity of matter contained in a body weight is what it is the force of attraction right nice Ashish very good so does not depend on acceleration due to gravity and yes mass if it is the total quantity how can it depend on gravity weight it will depend on gravity yes it is a measure of inertia you are right more the mass more difficult it is for the body to change its state that is what we what uh, john means over here nice w equals mg fine so this is weight w equals mg and f equals also mg right thank you thank you rick yes difference between mass and weight uh ashika we are doing it right now and yes don't worry don't worry i'll tell you uh inertia is directly proportional to mass uh, yes you are right it's okay debug not a problem is weight measured in kg or newton that's where the confusion comes i mean you would think sir weight should be mg it should be newtons right that's right weight should be newtons but then when i stand on a weighing machine it tells me my weight is let's say i'm talking about me it says my weight is 70 kg uh 70 kg kg it should be mass then why are we saying it is my weight right that is the question yes raj uh sorry uh bhumi right you're right at very high velocities mass can change that is yes that is that's an equation yes all right so when you say mass is 50 kg and you stand on the machine and the machine tells you 50 kg you think it is telling you your weight no the machine is trying to tell you your mass but mathematically how it is doing let's say the g value at that point is 10 see for assumption purpose only i'm taking 10 right so let's say the g value is 10 meter per second square the weight will be how much it will be 50 multiplied by 10 that is 500 newton the machine read 500 newton the machine is calibrated in such a way that whatever value this is calculating it will divide it by 10 and give you the mass and that's how the machine shows you 50 kg 
Now the thing is, if you take this machine to anywhere else, right, it will malfunction because it is telling you to wait. And yes, yes, one one new, newton equals one kg. Yes, yes. Mass into acceleration, right? Yes. And that's why the machine is trying to tell you your mass, but mathematically, what it is actually calculating? Calculating the weight. Fine. <laughs> nice, Vishal. So, yeah, mine is almost 70, 74, I would say. It's a system of measurement, uh, Ashika. CGS, centimeter, gram, and second. MKS, meter, kilogram, and seconds. And yes, weight is more at poles. Yes, come on, you got it. So, the weight is, you got as 500 newtons. Fine. So, mass and weight. One more device which will measure the weight is spring balance. I mean, you know it as spring scales or something, right? Spring balance or, sp or spring scales. 30? Looks like underweight, Shruti. Oh, Hema, so I you know I would say you are not written wrong. It is what kg is mass meter per second square, right? And what, what you are writing over here is kg slash meter s square. So that's why it looks wrong. But I, I know you, you know it correctly. Nice. So spring balance, again, it measures the weight using some other mechanism, right? You will learn it, don't worry, in 11th, you learn the spring force. So, W equals mg. So, now comes the time of differentiation, right? Nice, Papiya, you have a spring balance. Ah, and <laughs> don't post it uh, too many times. Right? So, the difference between mass and weight. First difference will be from the definition, right? Quantity of matter is mass, gravitational force is weight, fine. Then comes scalar quantity. Why? It's a quantity of matter. It is going to be scalar quantity. No direction needed. Weight is going to be a vector quantity. Why? Because it's a force. Mg. That's it. Right? Yes, mass is constant. Weight is not constant. You're right. Si unit is kg. Si unit is newton. Now, yes, you are applying a force of 500 newton on earth. Si unit is newton. And let me tell you, there is one more unit that is KGF, right? KGF, that is also the unit of weight only, fine. Nice. All right, last one. It is independent of gravity, it is dependent on gravity, fine. All right, I think this differentiation is, this, this difference is fine. So let's move to a question. What is the force of attraction of Earth on Arun if his mass is 60 kg? This is quite easy. See, uh, ideally, I hope you might be looking for the option 600, right? If it is not there, which means you know what you have to do. Nice, 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 Ashish. Yes, Vishal, KGF, kilogram force. Oh. All right, supernova. Calculation mistake, uh, you know, it's pretty uncommon, but huh, sometimes it happens. Uh, NASA also did this once. Yes, you're right. We have to take G as 9.8. And when you take G as 9.8, you will get 60 multiplied by 9.8. And what you will get? 588 newtons. And that's why option D is the right answer. Fine. So this was quite easy. I understand. Come on. Let's take the next question. Pile weighs 600 Newton at a point near the equator. All right. If she measures her weight at the North Pole, her weight will. You can't take G as 10, but the reason is in, in those four options, in the previous question, Sanya, right? In those four options, you won't get 600, which means you know you have to take it as 9.8. Nice, Vishal. All right. So this question, if you think it's very easy, you just have to analyze it. 
on equator her weight is 600 and you know that the gravitational force of attraction or the acceleration due to gravity is lesser at equator compared to poles right at pole g will be more means this weight which is at equator 600 newton it is going to increase at the poles and that's why right increase i mean all of you are giving increase nice very good all right so we got it w equals mg g equals gm by r square and radius at equator is more than radius at poles which means which means weight is going to be more at poles and that's why it is going to increase yes very good very good nice Nice, nice, Nipun, Hema, Deepak, John, very good. All right, guys, come on. Next question. Everybody fine? Able to understand everything? Why can a man jump higher on the moon than on the earth? Ah. First question with three options. I mean, this was this was an easy question. It's not a question which is there in any book or something. I mean, we are framing these questions for the sake of understanding. And don't worry, we'll have sessions where only questions will be there, like exam-oriented sessions. Yes. Really? See, Ashwin sir has, sir has so many looks. I mean, it's very difficult to compare him with some other teacher, right? So that's why. Oh, nice, Ashish. I think, I think you guys know it. Come on, let's analyze it. Don't worry. And uh, all of you are giving the correct answer. You are right. So, so I just want to prove how you are right. On Earth, the mass is this much calculated. Fine. Radius is given to you. Weight is, weight of an object on Earth will be like this, right? Where? This is G and this is M. Kept like that. On moon, the mass is this much, this is the radius of moon, this is the weight, and this is going to be this much. When you divide it, you will get Wm by We equals 1 by 6. So you are right, yes, it is 1 upon 6th on the moon. So from all this mathematical calculation, what is our, what is our takeaway? Our takeaway is acceleration due to gravity on moon is 1 6th of the earth, okay? Yes, uh, uh, yes, Ashika, you are right. Arpan, Hema, nice, nice. Face Papia. Right, come on, nice guys, nice, 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 very good. So, the takeaway is on the moon, it is one sixth of the earth. Yes, equation of motion of a freely falling body. Harshit, uh, okay, let me just, you know, complete this thing. During the summary, I'll explain to you, right? I won't forget, Harshit. Fine. All right, so. The weight decreases to one tenth, which means if it is weighing 60 kg, now don't think sir, 60 kg, kg is mass and you are saying weighing 60 kg. I told you why we are saying this. It's a confusion, but still you can think when I am saying weighing 60 kg, on the moon, the machine will read how much? It should read 6, right? 60 by 10, it should, sorry, 60 by 6, it should read 10, right? Yes. Yes, Ashish, you are right. Yes, Arnab, it will. See, uh, whatever is there, anyway, it is going to help. Extra things, don't worry. Yes. Ideally, it should be 600 Newtons, right? Right? And divide by 6, it should be 60 Sorry, divide by 6, it should be 100 Newtons. You're right. Nice. All right. So, come on. Let's summarize everything. Acceleration due to gravity, you know. G equals G by R square. All right. Along the surface of the Earth, that is something you're right. RP, radius at poles, is less than radius equator. That means G at poles is going to be more than G at equator. Yes, mass of the earth. So, see, mind it. Mass of the planet, if you are talking about here, mass of the earth. <laughs> Puppy are nice. All right. Yes, yes, very good. So, come on. With height. So, we understand if you go 
above the surface of the earth the value of g will decrease right so a is nearer to the center of the earth compared to b orbit and that's why g at a is more than g at b all right free fall if an object is moving under the influence of the force of gravity alone it is said to be under free fall i mean one and only one condition it should be under the force of gravity and gravity alone all right so arnav yeah i told you uh, it will help plus you have to add extra to it right thank you vishal right come on mass and weight these four differences are very important i would say mass weight quality sorry quantity of matter gravitational force scalar vector kg newton mind it i'm saying si unit and that's why i'm saying it is newton otherwise new uh, unit wise kgf is also a unit all right In, independent of gravity depends on gravity the weight w equals mg and this is one more take away which we discussed difference between acceleration to gravity at earth and moon it is 1 by 6 right 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 thank you hema how the si unit of g is okay see f equals g m1 m2 by r square m is kg this is kg this is meter square so you have to find this and f is newton so that's why newton meter square per kg square fine got this is how you find units that's it thank you akshay so we got you covered now harshit i think you were asking about uh, equation of motion during free fall it was simple acceleration should be constant and that is constant so in your book it is given to you going up is negative so minus of 9.8 meter per second square coming down is positive plus 9.8 meter per second square and that's it apply this in 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 the in the uh, equation and you will get the answers thank you deepak now there is one information to you which i want to give you uh regarding your next session it is going to be in jan all right it is going to be on jan 3rd which means enjoy your holidays enjoy your christmas slash winter holidays right feel free enjoy and we'll meet again in jan don't worry we'll discuss about work energy and power fine jan 3rd it'll be a new year then and you know what we'll be wishing each other happy new year don't worry right thank you ashika so and another thing is there is a free trial class description you can see if you want you can just uh, uh, attend it don't worry it's a free thing thank you to seen all right yes akshay you're right it is deleted all right guys ah uh, we can thank you papiya we can take leave enjoy enjoy your holidays we'll meet in in 2022 now all right bye bye